Well, howdy there, internet people. It's Belle again. So today, we're going to talk about Harris General's national security leaders, endorsements, and a reminder from the brass. Vice President Harris had a constellation of stars come to her defense. Nine generals and admirals, including three four-stars, signed on to a letter endorsing her as, quote, the best and only presidential candidate in this race who is fit to serve as our commander-in-chief, while also condemning Trump. I know, you might have seen headlines saying it was 10 generals or 10 flag rank officers or something like that. They're wrong. There is a 10th signature, but it's from a former sergeant major of the Marine Corps. To be clear, not a sergeant major in the Marine Corps, but the sergeant major of the Marine Corps. Some might argue he actually had the more important position, but he had stripes, not stars. For those not familiar, that position is generally the most senior enlisted Marine in the entire Marine Corps. So, Harris got a letter of endorsement and support from people who wore stars and stripes. The statement is on the letterhead of National Security Leaders for America. Beyond praising Harris and her, for her stances, the letter also has some harsh words about Trump. It calls him, quote, danger to our national security and our democracy. It also includes a reminder to Americans who are being hammered by Trump's rhetoric about Afghanistan. The letter says that at his core, Trump, quote, does not understand selfless service and sacrifices, and he should never be allowed to again serve as commander-in-chief of the greatest fighting force in the world. He, re he repeatedly fails to take responsibility for his own role in putting service members in harm's way. Without involving the Afghan government, he and his administration negotiated a deal with the Taliban that freed 5,000 Taliban fighters and allowed them to return to the battlefield. Then, he left President Biden and Vice President Harris with no plans to execute a withdrawal and with little time to do so. This chaotic approach severely hindered the Biden-Harris administration's ability to execute the most orderly withdrawal possible and put our service members and our allies at risk. Nevertheless, President Biden, with the support of Vice President Harris, ended America's longest war, oversaw the largest airlift in U.S. history, and brought our troops home. Trump is trying desperately to turn the withdrawal from Afghanistan into a campaign issue. The campaign strategy was probably to rely on sharp rhetoric in an attempt to lay the blame at the vice president's feet. They were probably counting on nobody correcting the rhetoric because most who could wouldn't want to publicize the withdrawal. However, after the incident at Arlington, there seems to be more and more military insiders willing to speak up. There are suggestions that at least some of the 10 people who signed this letter will be making a series of media appearances to talk about the withdrawal. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.